Hi you guys and welcome back to another makeup and true crime video. I hope you guys are having a great week. I am having a super productive week so I wish the same for you. If you're new here my name is Zara and I post a new true crime video every single week so go ahead and hit that subscribe button it would mean so much to me plus you wouldn't miss out on any of my future videos. We are like entering spring right now is it spring? Summer, winter, autumn, spring. I think it's spring and my hay fever is just like out of control. All right, so today's case is an extremely disturbing case and one that involves the term honor killing. And if you haven't heard of the term honor killing before, it is when the murder of an individual takes place by someone seeking to protect what they see as dignity and honor in their family. And those killed will often be more liberal than the murderer rather than you know genuinely dishonorable most often unfortunately it involves the murder of a little girl or a woman by male family members due to the perpetrator's belief that that girl or woman has you know, brought dishonor to their family home and family name. This case focuses on the Saeed family and mainly the father. His name was Yasser Abdul Saeed and he was born on 27th of January 1957 in Sinai, Egypt. And he came to the US on a student visa in 1983 when he was around 26 years old. And in 1987, he ended up marrying a woman named Patricia Owens when he was 30 and she was just 15 years old. How many times have I told you guys a story where a guy is marrying a 15 year old girl? Like this happens so often and you just don't realize like how often it really does happen. Yesser's family actually worked at the convenience store complex next to Patricia's family's home apartment. And Patricia initially when she was like 14, began dating Yasser's brother Yassine. And even though Patricia was so young and wasn't legally allowed to get married, Yassin, um was able to get her father's permission to marry Patricia. And her father consented to this marriage and they were gonna get married. But then Yassine and Patricia ended up breaking up and then Patricia began dating Yasser. And then Yasser and Patricia ended up being the ones to get married, which is just so strange how this girl just gets like passed along in the family line, like it's so weird to me. Patricia claims that she doesn't actually believe that Yasser loved her or she loved Yasser, but Patricia grew up so poor and her family was so poor that Yasser and his family's promise of wealth and taking care of her and giving her a good life made her want to leave her family and trust Yasser believe that he was going to give her everything he promised her. Yasser claimed that he did love Patricia and that his family had a ton of money and that they would take care of Patricia and treat her with respect. Yasser and Patricia ended up having three children in their marriage. They had a son named Islam born in 1988, a daughter named Amina born in 1989, and then they had another daughter named Sarah born in 1990. They literally had a child every single year, like, so at first their marriage was going, you know, pretty well. Yasser was very loving to Patricia, but after six months to a year into their marriage, everything just started going downhill. Yasser had a job as a taxi driver, but he barely worked. He like never wanted to work. So Patricia ended up having to take on the role of having a job and looking after three children. As the years would go on, Yasser's true colors would show through and he was revealing himself to be somewhat of a tyrant. He wanted to have more and more control and he didn't want Patricia to have any say in her life basically. And he also didn't want Patricia to have any contact with her family. He believed that because her family was American and they were white, they were basically trash. He wasn't fond of anything American and he would call her family trailer trash. Yasser began to tell Patricia that he, you know, regretted marrying her because she was American and because she was trash. And this led to him becoming physically abusive. Whenever he did go to work and if he ended up having late shifts driving the taxi, he would come back home after a shift. And while Patricia was sleeping in bed, he would like kick her feet to wake her up. He would take out all the clothes from the dresser drawers and then throw it on the floor and be like, clean it up. One time he even slashed her legs because she refused to have sex with him. Patricia claims that Yasser cheated on her multiple times and he even had her pose for like these weird photos. One of the photos, he was holding a knife around her throat and that alone would have freaked me out enough. Like you're holding a knife to my throat, you're my husband. 
Is this supposed to be a joke? Like, is this funny? Patricia claims that Yasser told her that before he met her, he ended up having a disagreement with a coworker, and he was so angry that he ended up waiting for this coworker outside the building. And he waited in his car. And then when the coworker came out of the building, he ran him over multiple times till this coworker died. Yasser's dad apparently then paid a lot of money to make this incident go away. And Yasser was never charged for any of this. If that is true, like he is so sick. And honestly, he really scares me. Like you can see it in his photos that he is not a man that you should be messing with. I can't imagine what Patricia went through. I know she chose to marry him, but she was so young and clearly her family, you know, wasn't really supportive. And sometimes when you need the money, you make these type of decisions. And because she was so young, this is, you know, all she would have known. Patricia claims that she put up with all this abuse for her children because again, that's all she knew. And she wanted to keep her children safe. Amina and Sarah grew up very close Sarah was more of a tomboy and Amina was more of the social butterfly, but she was also very outspoken. They were also pretty close with their brother, Islam, and people state that Islam was a pretty awkward guy. He was pretty socially awkward and he would throw fits if things didn't go his way. And he was just overall a pretty like awkward person. Amina and Sarah always looked out for Islam and they were very, very protective of him. There are a few home videos from their teenage years together and you can see their interactions together and how close they really were. Sarah and Amina were popular, smart, and they had really good manners. They both got really good grades in school and they were both very, very pretty. They both had high academic achievements and goals. And even though Sarah was quiet, all she ever did was talk about school and Amina actually wanted to become a doctor. They grew up in Bedford, Texas with a Southern Baptist mother, but they were raised in the traditions of old Egypt as Yasser was Muslim. So their upbringing was pretty strict and Yasser, their father, he wanted control of their lives. He wanted to know where they were going, where they were coming from, and he just wanted to know their every move. He was very protective of them. Now there isn't super clear information on when or how this next incident took place, But sometime when the girls were teenagers, Patricia's mother called up Patricia and ended up telling her that Amina had informed her that her father had touched her. Patricia ended up taking the girls to Cook's Children's Hospital to get the girls examined and then Child Protection Services was called. Now, if you go online, there are documents which outline word for word what took place and what Amina and Sarah claim happened to them and what Yasser did to them. But it's pretty graphic and I just don't think I want to discuss that on here. So if you want to know what happened, you can definitely look that up. So both Sarah and Amina were claiming, you know, that things had taken place and they had been abused. But after being examined by doctors, there was no physical proof that any abuse had taken place. But that doesn't mean that abuse, you know, didn't take place. It's just that there was no remaining proof of it, I guess. So Yasser was brought in to the police station to be questioned. And he was so upset that this was even happening. You know, he was being accused of abusing his daughters. So Patricia ended up taking the girls to go live with her parents. And Yasser would call up Patricia's parents' house and just leave them threatening voicemails call them at all hours of the night. And then he would also drive past their house constantly. He was just constantly threatening them because he was so upset that he was being accused of something like that. The police was called and Yasser was arrested for retaliation, but he didn't actually go to jail for this. And then soon after, I guess out of fear, Patricia made the girls take back their accusations against their father. And she did this to prevent Yasser from going to jail. The girls were told by Patricia to say to the police that the accusations of abuse were false and they were actually coached by Patricia's family to make these accusations against their father. This obviously caused a rift between Patricia and her family because Patricia's family believed the girls. They believed that this abuse had in fact taken place. So Patricia then ends up taking the girls and goes back to move in with Yasser. Patricia has since stated in interviews that she doesn't actually believe that Yasser would have abused his daughters. But in saying that, 
There are a ton of home videos, like I did mention. And in these videos, Yasser is recording his daughters and he is doing and saying very inappropriate things. He zooms in on their privates or private areas and makes moaning sounds when looking at them through the lens. Like it's all wrong, all wrong. You can see how uncomfortable they are. They're like squirming in front of the lens and they're almost laughing it off because I think that's how uncomfortable they were. Yasser would often record his daughters without their knowledge and he would spy on them or audio tape them. Amina once stated that she was so afraid to even use the public telephones because she believed that her father, Yasser, knew everything and was everywhere. When she was a teen, Sarah ended up getting a job working at a convenience store and Yasser would drive during her shifts and spy on her outside the store and he would film her and then he would punish her later on when she got home because she was smiling too much at the customers. So after the abuse allegations, Patricia and Yasser took their family and ended up moving to Maryland for a few months. And then they took the family to Egypt and then they ended up staying there for a few months before they came back to Texas. And Patricia claims that they did this to sort of let the abuse allegations and everything calm down before they could resume their normal life. And she also claims that she did this to make Yasser happy because she was afraid that he would hurt her family. When Amina was 16, Yasser took her to Egypt and wanted her to marry a 47 year old man. And Amina obviously refused. She wanted no part of it. Amina stated that she didn't want to marry a stranger and that she couldn't do it. She was American and she wanted the choice to pick her own husband. Through text messages later recovered from Amina's phone, Amina stated that she once heard her father discussing with his brothers, her uncles, about taking his daughters to Egypt and about how much their bride prices would be. Amina stated that she heard her father say to her uncles, that he would sell his daughters to the highest bidders. When the girls were only young, maybe, you know, two or three years old, Patricia's mother, so the girl's grandmothers, state that when they were that young, Patricia had a discussion with her that, you know, these girls are never going to be able to marry who they want. They would have to marry a Muslim. And Patricia's mother stated, no, these girls are going to marry whoever they want. They can do what they like the same way I can do whatever I want. That's going to be their life. And apparently Patricia stated, well, no, that's not how it's going to work. This is just the way it's going to have to be for them. Whatever Yasser wants, Yasser gets. Like women are just not seen as human beings. We're seen as trade as made for men. So like I mentioned before, Amina was extremely outspoken and she clearly refused this. She was like, no, I'm not going to marry who you tell me I should marry. I don't want to have a life dictated by others, rightfully so. So when she was in her teens, Amina secretly began dating a boy named Joseph Marino, whom she met while taking Taekwondo classes. And whenever her father was out of the country and she had the chance to meet Joseph, she was so afraid of her dad and she was so anxious of meeting him because she believed that her father would be spying on her with binoculars. Amina had a code word that she would text Joseph that don't text me if I use this code word because my father's around or she was afraid that he would go through her phone later. Amina was actually so afraid of her father that if Joseph was in her car, she would tell Joseph not to even say a word because she believed that her father had bugged the car. Eventually, Yasser actually found a note that Amina had written to Joseph and he was obviously furious, but Amina denied that the note was real. She stated that this note was just written to an imaginary boyfriend in a perfect world where she could have friends, she could be free. She was just writing this note to this imaginary person. She assured her father that it wasn't real, but obviously Yasser being Yasser, didn't trust Amina and he now went on a search to uncover Amina's relationship. Now listen to this, within a couple days of finding this note, Joseph claims that Amina no longer attended Taekwondo classes and Yasser moved his family 20 miles away to a new house in Louisville, Texas. Joseph stated that Amina was just gone within those two days. Joseph and his mother were extremely worried when this happened because Amina had indicated to them in the past that if anything was to happen, her father would not hesitate to kill her or take her to Egypt and just marry her off. A short time later, this is now February 2006, Amina emailed her Taekwondo instructor and she told him, you know, my father has moved us to Louisville and she hates it there. She wanted the Taekwondo instructor to pass a message on to Joseph and let him know that she's okay and she hoped that one day they could be together. Joseph's mother, Ruth, began emailing Amina and Amina told her that her father was harassing her to give him 
Joseph's information because he wanted to go and find Joseph and kill him. Amina had refused all these attempts of Yasser trying to get this information out of her and Yasser beat her so badly that Amina claims that you couldn't distinguish her lips from her braces because he had smashed them into her braces. Shortly after this move, Yasser takes the girls to Egypt and this time after all the drama with Joseph, Amina was truly terrified that she was going to be left in Egypt. She asked Ruth in emails, you know, if he takes me to Egypt, can I refuse to get on the plane? What will happen if we go to Egypt and he ends up taking away our US passports? So she ended up going to Egypt and while in Egypt, Amina ends up sneaking off to an internet cafe and she only had a couple minutes. She ends up sending a quick email to Ruth and telling her, my father has taken away our US passports. After that email, Ruth had not heard from Amina again until Amina returned back to the US and emailed Ruth and told her, look, I'm okay, I'm back in the US. Nothing happened while I was there. It seems like Yasser was taking them there to threaten them, to show them like, look, you know, this is what's gonna happen to you if you don't obey me, if you don't do, you know, what I say. But at the same time, it's also possible he was looking for the highest bidder and he wanted a certain amount of money for each daughter and he wasn't going to sell them off until he got that, you know, amount. At this point, Sarah also had a boyfriend named Eric, but their relationship was more of like a puppy love type of relationship. It wasn't serious yet, but Yasser did not find out about this relationship. Amina and Joseph at this point were able to get in contact with each other again. And after everything they had been through, they had realized that, you know what? We really, really do love each other and we wanna to be together. They had plans to go to Las Vegas and start a new life. However, they had to be extremely careful because Yasser had guns and they both knew that he wouldn't hesitate to kill either of them. Amina ended up getting so depressed because all of this was becoming so overwhelming for her. She knew that this wasn't going to be easy. This was actually going to be very difficult. And she attempted to take her own life. However, she was taken to hospital and given treatment but at hospital, she didn't admit to the staff and doctors over there what was truly going on because she was a minor and she believed that, you know, they would just let her parents intervene and, you know, be involved. Around Christmas time in 2007, Amina contacts Joseph and she tells him, I'm done. They were finally leaving. Patricia told her sister that Yasser had threatened to kill Amina because she was dating an American boy and Patricia ended up becoming really, really terrified for her daughter's lives. So she finally decided to leave Yasser. Patricia, along with Amina, Amina's friend, Eddie, Sarah and Sarah's boyfriend, Eric, all left and went to stay with Patricia's sister in Kansas. When Yasser found out about this, he ended up going to the police and filing a missing persons report for his daughters and his wife. Islam, his son, was still living with him at that time. On 27th December 2007, the family moves into a hotel in Tulsa while searching for a place that they could rent. They moved to Tulsa because they just didn't feel that Kansas was safe anymore. During this time, Amina purchases a burner phone so that she can contact Joseph without her father tracing her. And on 28th December 2007, the family ends up signing a lease to an apartment under a fake name. At this point, Islam, their brother, and their father, Yasser, was just phoning them and calling them and trying to get them to come back home, pleading that things would change, that they weren't gonna hurt them. They just basically kept calling them, you know, come back home, things will be different this time. On 29th December, 2007, Amina's friend, Eddie, had to return back to Texas for a job and at this stage Patricia begins to feel guilty for leaving you know Yasser and her son Islam behind and she now decides that she wants to return home. Yasin, Yasser's brother, the one Patricia was initially dating before Yasser, ends up calling up Patricia and says if you return home we will make Yasser leave the home. Yasser then ends up calling up Patricia and they both agree that Patricia should return home with the girls. Patricia ends up telling Sarah that they're going back home to be with Yasser, but they did not tell Amina this. Patricia ends up lying to Amina and tells her, 
We're going back to Texas because we need to put flowers on a relative's grave and we will stay in Texas for the new year. But then once we break the new year, we will go back to Tulsa. Once they arrive back in Texas, Patricia ends up telling Amina that she is going to reunite with Yasser, which as a mother, I feel like that is such a betrayal of trust. Like, even if you didn't know whether your daughters were telling the truth or not, your duty is to protect them. And if they were showing such intense fear of their father, like, where is your common decency to allow Amina, who was nearly 18 at this point, to sort of make her own decision for herself? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like that decision to lie to Amina just to get her back to Texas, well, to come back to Texas willingly at least, was pretty, pretty awful. So as one can imagine, Amina was so upset and she refused to go home. She said, I'm not going home. I'm not going to be with dad. Yeah, sir. And she probably believed that he was going to destroy her for having the balls to even leave him for that short period of time. Like they attempted to leave him. So can you imagine the fear that they must have felt? And maybe Patricia and Sarah were actually so afraid. That's why they did go back. But Amina had a different plan. She knew that she had to get out of there. So because Amina refused to go back and live with, you know, Yasser and her family, she ended up staying with a friend, but Sarah and Patricia ended up going back home to live with Yasser. On 31st December 2007, New Year's Eve, Amina ends up calling her aunt back in Kansas and tells her, you know what, mom went back to dad. Amina was really scared while she was talking to her aunt and she said, you know, mom's not going to help me. I'm by myself. In the new year on 1st January 2008, Patricia kept calling Amina and telling her, you know, please come back home. You need to come back home. You need to be with us. But Amina refused because she knew that her father was going to kill her. She said, he is going to kill me. I cannot come back home. Amina knew she couldn't trust her mother, but Patricia ends up coming to her friend's house and taking Amina home anyway. That night when Amina returns home, Yasser tells the girls he wants to take them both for dinner because he wanted to talk about everything and sort this whole situation out. Yasser takes Amina and Sarah in his taxi and drives them to dinner. Yasser ends up shooting his daughters multiple times in his taxi and then flees. Police believe that this was an honor killing and even though Yasser wasn't particularly a religious man, experts have stated that in honor killings there actually is no place for it in the religion of Islam and perhaps this is more of a cultural belief as opposed to religious. After the shootings, Yasser was nowhere to be found and it was believed that he fled to Egypt. Amina and Sarah's funeral took place on 5th January 2008, and Joseph, Amina's boyfriend, states that he was sitting two rows from the front, and Joseph states that he didn't realize, but at the time, sitting directly in front of him was Islam. And when Islam turned around and realized that it was Joseph who was sitting directly behind him. He ends up getting up and screaming, get out, you don't belong here, you're the one that did this. A fight apparently ensued and Joseph was removed from the funeral, which is so sad because that was his girlfriend's funeral. The girls were then buried at a Muslim cemetery um, by Patricia's choice. The family of Patricia states that they pleaded with Patricia not to bury the girls at that cemetery because it was so cold. It was just bare. There was no flowers. There was no sort of tombstones. It was just sort of like a bare, rocky, mud-filled cemetery. And Patricia refused, stating that the girls needed to have a proper Muslim burial. And it seems that Patricia, you know, even though Yasser was nowhere to be found. She was still afraid of him. Yasser's brothers were all questioned and listed as suspects in helping Yasser escape. And shortly after the murders took place, Yasser's brothers call Patricia and tell them they want Islam to come to their house to have dinner and be with his cousins and just spend some time with his side of the family after this tragedy. Shortly after Islam left Patricia for the dinner at their brother's house, Patricia ends up getting a call and gets informed that Islam is actually on a plane to Egypt 
Islam ended up remaining in Egypt for three years. He apparently tried to come back to Texas multiple times, but Yasser's brothers did not allow him to return. They basically kidnapped him. Well, they did kidnap him. And I believe this was to brainwash Islam and to get him to think the way that they think. Now, Patricia really frustrates me in this case. And here's another reason why. During the time that Yasser was on the run, Patricia's family went out into the streets with big signs and protested with Yasser's pictures, you know, pleading for any information on him or any information on the shootings. Patricia was completely against this. She just wanted to move on with her life and she didn't want Yasser to be in the public eye, which is just so shady considering that he was on the run. Wouldn't you want him to be found? Wouldn't you want him to be apprehended? Somehow this woman still wanted to protect Yasser. After he killed your daughters, after his family abducted your son, you're left alone. Like either the fear must have been, you know, so intense or she's just a really silly woman. Even in interviews, I feel like you can see that she knows she played a part in failing her daughters, but she continues supporting Yasser saying, he's a good man. He was kind, he was loving, he was a good father. You know, with those photos of him holding a knife to her throat or her taking pictures holding up these guns. He made her do all this and he was a kind, loving man. There was even a photo of Islam as a one-year-old dressed up and he's holding a rifle at the age of one. Patricia actually claims that she did not even know this photo of Islam ever existed until she was interviewed. She's all over the place. Sometimes she's saying she's scared, she was coerced, she was forced into things. But then most of the time, all she's doing is defending Yasser. Her stories don't even match. Like one time she claims, you know, I'm a Muslim. And then the other time she claims, you know, I'm a Christian. I wouldn't even put it past her that she probably is suffering from severe mental and emotional distress. The sad and scary thing is that Patricia's relatives and friends believe that Patricia actually assisted Yasser in setting up the girls' killings. Patricia's phone records actually show that she made a call to Yasser hours after the girls were killed. At this point, Yasser was then placed on the FBI's most wanted list. He was in the top 10 most wanted. And after all this investigation, they believed that Yasser was actually still in Texas and he was in hiding, but he was being helped by his family. The only break in the case came nine years later on August 14th, uh, 2017, when a maintenance worker at an apartment complex in Bedford, Texas, and it was at this apartment complex where Islam, Yasser's son, was actually renting an apartment. And this maintenance worker believed that at this apartment, he saw a man matching Yasser's description. When he went to the police, the detectives ended up showing him a picture of Yasser and the maintenance worker was like, yeah, that's the guy I saw inside this apartment. So at around 6.30 p.m. that same day, a detective comes to the apartment to interview Islam. Islam was super upset and he refused to cooperate with the police. And as the police was leaving, he reportedly makes a phone call and says, we have a problem. So at 1 a.m. that same night, the police finally obtained a search warrant and they went into the apartment and searched the apartment, but they found that the apartment was completely empty. But when they were looking around, they saw that the glass door to the patio was open and below the patio, below the balcony, they saw there was a bush with like, that had been flattened, but had like broken branches and everything in it, you know, suggesting that someone had jumped off the patio into the bush. And next to the bush, they also found a pair of eyeglasses. And then together with this, they found several cigarette butts inside the apartment, as well as a toothbrush. So they took all these items to the FBI lab and they ended up comparing the DNA from these items to Amina and Sarah's DNA. And they determined that this DNA most likely came from the girl's biological father. Now, I don't know why this next bit took so long, but three years later in August, 2020. So I guess for all those years, they were still looking for him, but they couldn't find him. So he must have gone on the run again after being almost found at Islam's apartment. So three years later in August, 2020, the police began uh, a 24 hour surveillance on this home in Texas. They observed Islam and Yassin, Yasser's brother, entering the home. But then when they see them enter the home, they also see the shadow of another man inside the home. And then once Islam and Yassin left, that shadow was still inside the home, indicating that there's a third person 
there. So after a week of surveillance, the FBI finally obtain another search warrant and they end up arresting Yasser inside that home on August 26, 2020. On that same day, they also arrested Islam, who was now 32 years old, and they also arrest Yasin, his brother, who was 59 years old. Islam and Yasin were both charged with concealing a person from arrest. Authorities suspect that several people helped Yasser avoid arrest for all those years. And a federal complaint suggested that Islam was actually in contact with all of Yasser's brothers helping him evade arrest. It seemed that after Islam was sent to Egypt, he was brainwashed into helping his father hide. Because earlier on, when the girl's funeral was taking place, Islam actually made a public appeal to his father to come out of hiding and that, you know, he probably was going to go to jail, but this was for the best and seemed like at the time he believed that, you know, his father did it, so he deserved to go to jail. But after coming back from Egypt, he was now helping his father evade arrest. Yasser was indicted on capital murder charges, making him eligible for the death penalty. On 19th January 2021, so very recent, Islam pleaded guilty to harboring a fugitive, conspiring to harbor a fugitive, and one count of conspiracy to obstruct justice. On April 27th, 2021, he was sentenced to 10 years in jail. As for Yassin, he claims that he hated what Yasser did that he didn't agree with it at all. And he claims that he would have never helped Yasser if he knew what Yasser was planning to do to his daughters. On February 4th, 2021, Yasin was found guilty of conspiring to harbor a fugitive, and he was sentenced to 12 years in prison on June 4th, 2021. So thank God Yasser was found, even though he was, you know, able to live a free man after murdering his daughters for over a decade. Sometimes the scariest people are the ones that can harm their own family, you know, their own children. And for what? For wanting to date an American boy? You married an American woman. Like, the hypocrisy of it all and the stupidity of it all is just... So let me know your thoughts on this case below. I found this one super difficult to research and there was a ton of information and documentaries on this case. After researching this case, I actually had to take a couple days off to like wind down because it was just too intense. I hope Amina and Sarah are now at peace and I hope that any other women going through this are able to escape, are able to get help, and are able to live their lives the way that they choose. It's such a difficult situation to be in. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to check out some of my other videos, click over here, and I will see you in the next one. Besitos. Bye.